Charter sailing Belize. Uh, we've been chartering in Belize for the last three years and it's been a challenge to find uh, accurate charts to say the least. This is the cruising guide. Um, it's recommended by the chartering company. We chartered with the moorings. Great, great chartering company. Great service and enjoyed chartering through them. Anyway, there's a chart that comes with this book, this cruising guide and it's probably the the most accurate chart for for charter sailing in Belize and uh, I don't even know if I'd call this a chart per se more of a more of a map as you you will notice there there's no uh, latitude and longitudinal markings on this chart for lack of a better term it does have a compass rose um, and you can see here the islands. This is approximately where the Moorings base is. This is the Placencia Peninsula. And then you can see some of the, the smaller islands. My chart is mapped up. This is actually the chart that they will use in the chart briefing when you when you do charter with the Moorings in, in southern Belize and Placencia. Um, the red areas do mark no sailing, um, or very, very shallow areas there with coral heads. Uh, the green areas denote um, marine sanctuaries, so there's no, there's no fishing there. And then the blue circle, this is the area they want you to stay inside generally this area when you're, you're charter sailing, sailing with them. You can go into the marine reserve down here. Um, but again, most of the islands are reflected on here. When I show you the other charts, you'll see some of the islands aren't even represented on the other charts. But I'll, I'll call your attention to just a couple. So you can see, for example, here, Whipperiki. And this shows Viper Rocks, which is a pretty big hazard right before you get to Whippery Key, and then also Lark Rock. So there are a lot of hazards here. Um, Belize is a challenging place to sail. I, again, you don't really need to do much charting there. It's all line of sight sailing. But uh, the biggest hazard is, is the shallow water and all of uh, the the coral heads and things there. Uh, in a mono hull, a little more challenging, and a cat obviously you, you've got a little bit more room, um, but again it's there's still a lot of shallow areas you have to be very careful. Best to have somebody up front on watch the whole time. There are a couple channels you can find. I try to stick to the channels uh, just just for peace of mind. And you can see they tried to mark a lot of the coral heads here on this chart, but there, there are just so many, which is great for snorkeling and diving, but uh, not so great for sailing. Very, very beautiful area, though. Anyway, again, this is the chart that comes with the cruising guide. I will call your attention. There is a compass rose on here. And there's a single single ring on this but you can see here this is true north and then the variation here to magnetic north is, is very slight in fact it's only three degrees and it indicates eight minutes west variation per year so this chart was created in 1989 and just to, to do some simple math here With the uh, three degree easterly variation in 1989 and eight minutes westerly variation change per year, uh, if we take the difference in years, we can see the difference between 2018 and 1989 is 29 years. So we need to take that eight minutes and multiply that times 29, which will give us a delta of 232 minutes 
since the chart was created um, we convert that from minutes to degrees and we can see that we have 3.87 degree change since the chart was created so we need to take the 3 degree easterly variation at the time the chart was created and correct for the 29 years which is 3.87 degree westerly change and that leaves us with a, a 0.87 degree variation so almost at zero right now which is, is kind of nice for navigation purposes right uh, not much of a correction less than a degree to go from true to magnetic or magnetic to true